I don't think anybody saw a 10 and three season from Oregon state last year. And there's reason to believe that they could take a step forward even further in 2023. There's 10 players that we'll talk about today. One of them being one of the more polarizing topics in college football. And we'll talk about why a 10 and three season could just be the start for what the Beavers expect this season. We'll start with the defensive side of the ball. This was a group that was extremely fun to watch. You look at a group that flew around the field, the secondary specifically. Katan Oladapo comes back and was one of the underrated players in that secondary. When you lose a couple of big names to the NFL draft, you expect things from the guys who are turning. And Oladapo is one of those guys that will have to step up. But I think you got the talent level in that secondary that is in good hands. And, and I think that this is a group that can be even better. Now, there's a lot of pressure on the front seven also to do, do their job because you lose some of those players on the back end. You can't expect them to cover for forever, but this is a team that expects to, to be really good once again in 2023. I, I think that Jonathan Smith has done one of the best jobs in college football of turning around a program that seemingly wasn't going anywhere for a long time. And that's really exciting for the Beavs. I, I think that this is a really fun conference to watch in 2023. So if you don't know about the Pac-12, make sure you study up because this conference is stacked this year. And Oregon State is one of those teams, not something I expected to say if you were looking back maybe two, three years ago. But Jonathan Smith has done a great job of getting his team in position to be competitive. The offensive line played a huge role last year in their success. And when you look at what they were able to do on the ground, they were the 28th best team in the country in terms of rushing. And Talise Fuaga is one of those players that helped out tremendously, specifically the Oregon game. The second half, they felt no need to pass the ball. And that's not an indication of how much they struggled throwing the ball because they really didn't. It's just a matter of, it was a matter of this offensive line was so good that they didn't need to pass the ball. Now you want to see the passing attack take a step forward. That is the weakness of this offense, but there are things we'll address in a little bit that will show maybe some improvement. And when you look at what Fuaga in this group did, it's really exciting to have some of these guys returning. And like I said, that Oregon game was just a dominant performance by this offensive line. And I believe that you're going to see some of the same things in 2023 that you saw maybe last year now uh, another guy that we'll pay attention to on the offensive line is joshua gray a guy who like fuaga has plenty of starts 33 career starts under his belt he's back for another year at tackle you have two tackles returning that are solid and all conference type players and in a pack 12 like i said that is Finally taking a step forward for the longest time. It felt like the Pac-12 was a forgotten conference in college football. And they're finally taking a step forward to being a really good, a really fun conference to watch. And Oregon State is one of those teams that will contribute to that. The offensive line returning what it does makes this group really exciting. The player that they added in the transfer portal on the defensive side of the ball will be a big contributor to that defensive line that we mentioned before, a group that needs to take a step forward. And a guy like Oluwesi Omotosho is one of those players that can be explosive. When you lose some of the talent they do, you kind of have some concerns about what comes back. Now, getting a guy like Omotosho from Wyoming, a group that is, if you look at what Wyoming has returning, the fact that they lost Omotosho and they'll be just fine says how talented that group is. But, Getting a guy like him on Oregon State, a group that really needs that front seven to step up, you kind of that explosive playmaker that could be a difference maker up front. And that's really exciting for the Beavs this year. This defense is going to face quite a few talented offenses. You look at USC, you look at Washington, you look at Oregon, you look at UCF. There's a lot of talented offenses that you're going to face. And it's just a matter of how often you can slow them down. You're, they're going to score points. They're going to move the ball down the field. It's just a matter of how many stops you can you produce for your offense to be able to step forward. And again, this is a team that finished 16th in scoring defense. So that's really good. But this offense still is going to need help. And when you lose some of the players that you do on defense, you need other guys to step up because you're still going to have some struggles. And it's just a matter of putting it all together and finding ways to be successful to help your team overall. We mentioned the offense and what it can do. Running the football, like I said, won't, won't be a problem because of the offensive line, but the talent they have returning 
at running back is also really fun to watch. A really talented group. And Deshaun Fenwick doesn't really get a ton of recognition because of the other guy that we'll talk about in a little bit, but at 6'2", 231 pounds, he is a big guy that commands a lot of attention and is a great second option in his offense. 553 yards and seven touchdowns. We should also mention that the quarterback they bring in brings good size as well. So this is a a backfield that could be an absolute problem for the Pac-12 this season. I'm really excited to see what they can do with this group and guys like Fenwick could have an even bigger year than they did in 2022, which is terrifying. A player that could step up or that needs to step up really is Silas Bolden. Wide receiver comes in and this is a a passing group that finished 105th in passing yards last year. So this, this is a group that could, a unit that could be better an aspect of this offense that could improve. But Fenwick is someone who as a returner is really explosive and they're just trying to find ways to get him the football offensively. And if you get him the ball in space, he's super quick. He's not the biggest guy at 5'8", 153 pounds, but he is someone who can make big plays. And it's just a matter of incorporating him in the offense. And again, I think what they did, whether it's going to the transfer portal or or at least recruiting, they're trying to bring in players that can make big plays. And sometimes they're guys like like Bolden and sometimes they're bigger guys as well. Right now, the secondary or the backfield, I should say, is the one that's going to command most of the attention. But if the passing attack takes a step forward, they're in good hands. Going back to the defensive side of the ball, James Rawls comes back as a leader for this defense, someone who could potentially have a bigger year. And there's pressure to to get this group to improve. A group that finished 104th in sacks last year. Now, that's not necessarily a ton on James Rawls. Getting pressure on the edge is more where you need that from. But Rawls is someone who uh, contributed up the middle. Team finished 70th in tackles for loss. He had 10 of them, so I don't think he's too much of a concern. But you have to get other players that are inexperienced to step up as well. The guy that we talked about before, the one who probably has the biggest impact on the team is quarterback DJ Uyangalale. You look at what he did at Clemson, it was very up and down. We know the stories, we know the struggles, and it's high, it was time for him to move on. He obviously realized that he knew that he needed to find a new home, and he returns to the West Coast for a team that could take a step forward because of him. He has the potential to be a really talented quarterback. The arm talent is there. The running ability is there as well. He's a tremendous player. It's just a matter of of getting it all together and really getting out of his own head. DJ is an extremely fun player to watch when his game is on, and we've seen flashes of that. You look at the Wake Forest game last year. You look at what he did when Trevor Lawrence went down with an injury. We know he has the ability to play really well, and honestly, if he he does play well, he can actually improve Oregon State to a better team than they were in 2023 or 2022. I think even in a talented Pac-12, you you have to play Oregon this year. You have to play Washington. You have to play at Arizona. You have to play Utah. There there are games that are going to be challenging, and it comes down to what does DJ do to make this group better? How does he handle the pressure? How does he handle the spotlight? And I'm excited to see what he can do for this Beavers team. Going back to the defense, another group that – really has a lot of pressure is the cornerback position. When you lose Rajon Wright and Alex Adams, you lose quite a bit of talent at the cornerback position. Ryan Cooper is someone who needs to take a step forward. Luckily for Oregon State, he had a career year last year. 11 passes defended, three interceptions. Easton size at six feet, 193 pounds. He is a playmaker for this defense. And again, secondary that is super talented, that shouldn't take a step back. That means good things for this defense. Another thing to keep an eye on, like I mentioned before, is that backfield. With DJ back, with Fenwick back, you throw in Damian Martinez, the former three star who a lot of people are really excited about. Six foot, 230 pounds. Uh, You're looking at a group that is not going to be fun to watch. Your lightest player in the backfield, if you have two running backs and a quarterback, is Damian Martinez at 230 pounds. That is not exactly a fun group to try and tackle. 
And you saw it last year. Martinez had 982 yards. He averaged 6.1 yards per carry and seven touchdowns. You put him, DJ, and Fenwick in the same backfield, and you pair that up with this offensive line, the rushing attack will not take a step back. They will be just as good as they were last year. They will be just as exciting as they were in 2022, and that means good things for this offense. It's just a matter of a few things. What does the passing attack do, and how does the front seven get back to where they need to be? Jonathan Smith, like I said, has done a great job, but this is a big challenge to be able to handle this type of competition. You look at the Pac-12 and what we've been saying over and over again, this is a Pac-12 that is going to be really tough to beat. This is a Pac-12 championship that will be tough to reach and tough to win, but this is a team in Oregon State that has the tools to make that happen.